I was struck by the huge volume of submissions that we had to our parliamentary inquiry. This is the first time that members of parliament have comprehensively looked at the issue of birth trauma. And can I say a huge thank you to those of them that did share in their traumatic stories. All of your stories were read and they very much informed this report. I think what came out for me from reading all of the submissions is that there does seem to be, unfortunately, a postcode lottery in maternity services in this country. I don't think that's acceptable, and that's why today, as my headline recommendation to the Prime Minister, I'm calling for a national maternity strategy to be rolled out and implemented in all NHS trusts. But more than that, I think we should also have a maternity commissioner or a new mum czar, if you like, and that person would be responsible for implementation and accountable, but crucially, directly to the Prime Minister. Yeah, the, the recommendations make perfect sense, but they're not going to make the ward safer in the short term. This is bad for women who are pregnant right now and indeed for any maternity staff who are thinking of leaving because they feel like they are failing families when they go to work. Well, first, I think it's really important to remember that a vast majority of the British public giving birth will have a positive experience. Of course, our report was just looking at the most challenging examples. But what's really clear from the report is that we do need to have additional resources. Um, the headline recommendation is to recruit, retrain and retain more midwives. And I've seen that myself when I gave birth to my own daughter, how incredibly busy the staffing levels were in my own hospital. And we do need to make sure we, we have, have the right been level talking, of I'm sorry to interrupt. We've been been talking for years now about recruitment, keeping, keeping, getting more midwives and uh, crucially keeping the ones that we've got that are thinking of leaving. These midwives can't be magic from thin air. It's going to take years to train them. How can we make sure that the wards are safe right now? Well, I think the first step, and I'm very much waiting to hear the Health Secretary's formal response to my report. Uh, she's coming to our launch later this evening in the House of Commons and will respond formally to each of our recommendations. But I think the first thing is we do need to say thank you to the NHS workers who are currently there and ensure they've provided the right level of training. Uh, we have yep. a huge range of topics covered in the report, everything from psychological mental health to birth injuries such of as course. my own. I just want to, because uh, time is short, I just want to find out from you as a Tory MP, as a Conservative MP who's done this cross-party work, why do you think or hope the government will take this report seriously when so many women have endured so much, uh, and we've seen that through all the recent maternity health scandals in recent years, why will this one hopefully be a game-changer? Well, firstly, can I thank the government for working very constructively with our committee. Um, I myself have meetings with the Health Secretary and Number 10. I've presented a copy of the report to the Prime Minister. And I think we can already start to see change. Um, I note that today the Health Secretary and the Chief Executive of the NHS have come out and have supported our headline recommendation because I didn't think it was right that we didn't have a central maternity strategy published across all NHS trusts. I think we've got to have that standardised base level of maternity care and that's something that the Health Secretary has welcomed today. Now it's just a question about the details to ensure that's rolled out and then implemented. Theo Clark, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. A mother who said she was bleeding on the floor and was told, stop making a mess, you should clean that up. I think a lot of the issues I'm talking about have been systemic in the NHS for many years, regardless of who was in government.